It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And yesterday we tackled the sedum praeltum by my pond because I was concerned that it was getting so tall that I couldn't see the water anymore. And you know how it is when you tackle an area, it's like going down a rabbit hole, isn't it? So, you know, I was really happy with how that turned out and, you know, thought, that's finished. I was sitting out, yes, or sitting out earlier today, uh, enjoying my handiwork and realized the Fred Ives have run amok too. These, look at these Fred Ives. They're leggy and trunky and they're taking over the sidewalk and truth be told, they need to come out too, don't they? And be reset. This will also give me an opportunity to clean this area up. I adore Graptivaria Fred Ives. This is one of my favorite succulents of all time because it is so tough. I've grown this plant in the sun. I've grown it in the shade. I've grown it coastal. I've grown it inland. Uh, it propagates like crazy. It grows like crazy. It will take water or no water. It's a good one to um, include in potted citrus because it doesn't mind getting really, really wet. It also doesn't mind being very dry. And when the stress of cold hits it, the plant turns a wonderful rosy purpley color. So I can't say enough about Graptivaria Fred Ives. This is also, ugh, this is a great plant to take leaf uh, to, to use for leaf propagation. Take this leaf, set it on some soil, on some dry soil, and in time, in a matter of weeks, you're going to see a little plantlet form right here at the end of this leaf. All the water and moisture and nutrients that are in this leaf will support that new growth. When your little plantlet gets to be about as big around as a quarter, this leaf will have pretty much decimated, you can then pop the little succulent off of the leaf, throw the leaf away and set your plant. Another way to work with this plant is propagating by cutting. Now this one, you can see I have one, two pups on this mom. Also have some yucky leaves. I've got some stems I'm not feeling. Yuck. And you know what, actually, I'm gonna cut this plant down to about two inches. That's the height that I want to reset at. What about the bloom? Oh, the bloom. Greg says, what about the bloom? The bloom is really, really sweet. And we've talked about this um, on occasion, how aphids tend to attack the blooms of your succulents, particularly the soft succulents. So if you see all kinds of black little bugs all over your bloom, it's probably a good idea to snip it off and dispose of it. This one does not have any aphids on it, so I'm gonna let it ride. Oh my goodness, these are so pretty. Now see this, I've got some, what looks like snail damage right there. Oh, would you look at that? There's a little baby snail on the back of the leaf. Damn, that's okay. I'm just gonna pull that off. You can't really see now. Oh, here's, here's another leaf with snail damage. So you can remove the leaves. It looks 100% better just removing those, those leaves that were attacked. That could also be a good leaf to do some propagation with if you'd like. Now these stems, you know, what, what can you do with this? Well, you know, I'm gonna throw it away. But if you want to put this in the garden of death and see if you can get the plant to throw off some pups, uh, the stem, you'd go right ahead. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's keep going. Now you'll notice that some of these graptos are coming out by the root and some I'm just breaking. Doesn't matter at all because I'm gonna be planting all of these back in the ground as cuttings. See, look at that. Look at the tiny little plant that grew on that stem. Isn't that cute? This is probably a little small to transplant. 
it's it's kind of tiny. Um, I don't know. Well, I guess it'll be viable. You might want to take this little guy and, and put him in the nursery rather than throw him back in the ground. Maybe put him in a little pot where you can kind of keep an eye on him. All right. And see, when you do this, this gives you the opportunity to really do some housekeeping too. And how good does this feel? Oh my gosh. Cleaning up all the crap. My little grandson, the succulent baby was over today. It's Valentine's Day. Happy, happy. Um, and I was out here in the garden with him and he was throwing rocks into the pond. And as I was, couldn't help myself when I was picking up detritus, he would look at it and say, yucky, yucky. It really is. He's right. It's very yucky. Oh, look at this. This is probably a sedum ghosty, but look, it has, look at that. It is, it's like, and it's like a bouquet. I mean, it's almost like a floral bouquet. It's crested and it's gorgeous. Here's another one. I don't want it on that great big long trunk. So I'll trim it up and reset that in the ground. What makes a plant crest? I have no idea. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It's just always a wonderful surprise. So yeah, let's get, let's get these out of here. Ooh, that was a good one. Huh, look at all of the roots, all the little air roots. This trunk, the plant had gotten too heavy and had fallen over and the plant was starting to throw off roots from the trunk. That's just a really intelligent way of, of the plant offering itself support. So smart, but don't worry plant, you don't have to work that hard. All right. Now, do you have to get all of the roots and all of the trunks out? You absolutely do not. You know, I've got, I've got a trunk right here. You know, that's attached to roots and I will probably get little plantlets forming on that trunk. I'm going to let that ride because I'm going to cover it up and I won't be able to see that. Okay. Now, once you get your area cleaned, oh my gosh, look at this little cross stacking crassula. Isn't that so cute? I'm going to trim those off and put them in my gutters. They're lost down here. All right. Now, once I've got this all cleaned up, what I'm going to do is take my handy multi-tool and I'm just going to scratch up the surface of the soil a little bit. You can scratch it up. You can add more potting or cactus and succulent mix or amended topsoil, whatever you want. But I just want to make it a little bit soft. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these beautiful cuttings and I'm going to trim them up to about an inch and then I'm just going to tuck them right back in the ground. Am I planting them? Not really. Just kind of laying them there. They don't care, particularly this plant, tough as nails. And what I want to see too is I want, I want some dirt exposed because what I'm going to do is come back and put some rock and pebble in this open space. I can kind of rob Peter to pay Paul because I like to see a little bit of rock. Sometimes your plants can just take over a space and it just looks, starts to look a little cluttered and crowded. So I'm really happy with this. Just that, you know, rather than having them so full. So, oh my gosh, guys, look. Look at all these plants that I have left. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got 12 Fred Ives and this fantastic ghosty crest. You know what? I'm going to put... 
I'm limbing this up just a little bit so that I can expose some more of the stem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this crest right here. Now see, I can now see the crest. You notice that I didn't plant it. It's pretty much just laying right on top of the soil. It will figure it out from there. I have zero concern about that. Wow, that is making me feel so much better. Although, now I see that this Crassula ovata is also a little bit too tall now. So, rather than yank it out of the ground, roots and all, because I feel like if I try to yank that whole thing out, it's going to take a lot of other stuff with it. So, I'm going to do the lazy thing. I'm just going to cut down low, as close to the ground as I can. Then I'm going to limb up the pieces, like so. And then, uh-oh. I just killed a snail. Okay, now I'm gonna take these pieces and I'm just gonna set them right back down like this. How about that, right? Right? How fun was that? Same with this one. Cut it down low, limb it up, and just set it right back on top of the ground. Oh my gosh, I could just, if it weren't getting dark, I mean, I feel like I could just go through the whole garden and do this. This is a good time here in San Diego. It's, it's February 14th, so chances are good that our nights are going to continue to warm up a little bit. The days are going to continue to get a little longer for sure. And, um, you know, we're moving into spring. All of the plants are waking up from dormancy. Uh, they have never, ever looked better in the garden. So I think that you should go out and evaluate your plants take a look at your weather, take a look at the forecast, and if everything looks golden, get out this weekend and start tearing in and do some, re some pulling up and some resetting. Then you can take all of your extra plants, you can make you know beautiful potted arrangements with them, you can donate them to friends, you can start another garden uh, in your yard, whatever floats your boat. This has been Laura Eubanks wishing you a wonderful Valentine's Day. I also want to offer a little shout out to my friend, to my friends, Tim and Leona. Tim had a sudden cardiac arrest right around the time Greg did about six months ago, and he suffered uh, a setback, um, had a lot of fluid around his heart, was back in the hospital, is back in the hospital, developed a bacterial infection, and he is as tough as nails, and he is gonna be okay. And he is doing so well, and I'm so pleased. And I just want to let them both know that myself, Greg, and I know all of you wish Tim the speediest of recoveries. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with Graptivaria Fred Ives and your succulent tip of the day.